now that we have discussed petrification process we shall start discussing now the coalification process so remember this flow chart always for coalification process peat lignite sub bituminous bituminous anthracite and then meta anthracite so how is coalification defined it is a diagenetic process up to the stage of formation of soft brown coals so in the previous class as i had discussed that there were two stages coalification and metamorphism so coalification is essentially a diagenetic process in which the processes from formation of lignite from peat that is the soft brown coal so if you consider the degree of uh, physical and chemical alteration then this is what is called as coalification okay now the beginning of the hard brown coal so lignite these are soft brown coals and the beginning of the hard brown coal coal stage that is sub bituminous stage the alteration of organic matter is extremely severe so for the beginning of hard brown coal stage which is also referred to as sub bituminous and here severe alteration of organic matter occurs that is why this is termed as metamorphism but remember that this metamorphism is substantially different than the metamorphism of the rocks so if a, this question arises that if metamorphism is happening for the hard brown coal stage that is sub bituminous stage is it that the uh, sediments will also get metamorphosed answer will be no the reason is that the temperature pressure and the time associated with the formation of bituminous coals they are not strong enough or they are not large enough to produce changes in the associated sediment so this metamorphism it is essentially for the formation of the subsequent stages of coal but it is not strong enough to metamorphose the sediments okay all right so as in the morning we were discussing about the physico structural changes the physico structural changes they include decrease of porosity which is very obvious you all understand this that when the loose sediments they get deposited they have large amount of porosity but as they keep on getting compacted they lose the porosity and the loss in the porosity 
uh, of the sedimentary rocks depends on the shape of the grains, the type of uh, material that is involved in the formation of sedimentary rocks. Similarly, here with the depth, with the pressure, with temperature, the porosity of the coals, it decreases. And the second is increase of optical anisotropy. parallel to the bedding planes. So both these physical structural changes that is decrease of porosity and increase of optical anisotropy they both are related to the rise of overburden pressure related to rise of overburden pressure with depth. So you can understand that the amount of pressure being applied by the overload of the sediments, it uh, causes these changes. Now, what are the chemical changes? The chemical changes, they include changes in the carbon, oxygen, hydrogen and volatile matter content. They also vary with rank and as I have already discussed with you that the calorific value of the coal is inversely proportional to the amount of volatiles, most importantly the moisture. So the chemical changes that is carbon, oxygen, hydrogen and volatile matter content, they vary and optical property. That is the vitrinite reflectance. We shall discuss about the vitrinite reflectance after we study the macerals. So both these properties, the chemical changes and the optical properties uh, which change, they both are depend dependent on the chemical composition of the coal. All right. Now, while we deal with the qualification process, it is not necessary that all the chemical parameters are appropriate indicators because it may happen that chemical alteration may vary at the individual stage of qualification. Okay. So, uh, it may quite be possible that while the proper stages of qualification are going on, it may happen that one stage may show a higher degree of alteration while the other stage may show a lower degree of alteration. So one cannot simply say that uh, all the chemical parameters will always give us the exact degree of qualification. Okay. So the comparative rank studies of the coal they are not carried on the entire coal uh, components. So we are not going to compare each and every com constituent of coal. Rather, we carry the comparative rank studies on the huminides, vitrinides or the concentrate of these masses. Okay. So you have to understand this that comparative rank studies when we i say rank so lignite subbituminous bituminous these are all rank comparative rank studies 
they are not carried on all the types of masses or constituents rather the comparative rank studies they are carried on the humanites vitrinites or on concentrates of these masserals these are all masserals humanites vitrinite these are all masserals so we study mostly the humanite and vitrinite or their concentrates because uh, the so there are several masserals okay so you have the liptinites you have fusinite uh, colotelinite tilinite a number of them each of these masseral has a different colification behavior but once we club them together as the huminites and vitrinites so the, in, in vitrinite there are several types of masserals so we'll see them once we study about the masserals but we are not going to study the individual qualification behavior of all of these the reason being that if we consider start considering each factor separately we will never be able to come to a conclusive study each of the masserals shows different behavior as uh, i was discussing about the chemical changes optical properties which are dependent on the chemical composition and I had also discussed that the comparative rank studies of the coal are not done on the basis of they are not done on the basis of uh, whole coal st studies but rather we compare the humanites vitrinite masserals or the concentrates of these masserals so on the basis of the comparative studies of these groups of masserals the qualification tracks of different masserals are uh, studied which are based on the hydrogen to carbon and oxygen to carbon atomic ratios so if we see here carefully we in this diagram four main types of or four main groups of masserals are given the exinites vitrinites macrinite and fusinite here it is also been given that these masserals are derived from which part of the plant so the exinite group of masserals are mainly derived from the uh, spores vitrinite group of masserals is from the woody tissues macrinite is derived from primarily primarily highly decomposed humus material while fusinite is partly charcoal means it is formed after main uh, majority of the parts of the vegetal matter have been subjected to high pressure and they have been almost burnt so here if you see carefully the exinites they are quite high in the hydrogen content and they have this uh, h by c ratio as almost 1.2 Vitrinite has a lower H by C ratio that is almost 0.7. Macrinite is again less and the lowest is uh, fusinite. Same happens with the O by C ratio. So these arrows they point towards the direction of coal rank increase. When I say coal rank increase it means that the coals which have which are of uh, lower rank they have higher amount of hydrogen and oxygen content while as you uh, go towards the increasing rank of the coal the h by c ratio decreases and o by c ratio decreases means the amount of carbon starts to increase while the other uh, at, uh, uh, while hydrogen and oxygen their amount starts to decrease this diagram may also be studied in uh, for the details of the uh, other groups of masserals in the coal which are the products or the concentrates of the these main uh, groups of masserals so exinite vitrinite macrinite and fusinite these 
groups of mast cells they can be studied to find out the colification track uh, in the uh, coals so in the brown coal stage the increasing rank is primarily characterized by the decrease of total moisture so as i had already told you that the uh, moisture is one of the important components of the volatile uh, matter in the coal so in the brown coal stage once the uh, rank of the coal starts to increase then that increase in the rank also witnesses a decrease of the total moisture content as the moisture content reduces the calorific value of the coal increases so it is an inversely proportional relationship the decrease in the moisture depends on the decrease of porosity as well as decomposition of the hydrophilic functional groups example uh, especially the hydroxyl group oh group so uh, we have seen that uh, with time temperature and pressure there is a change in the physical structural characteristics which involves the decrease in the uh, porosity of the coals so as this porosity decreases the moisture content also decreases that is first thing and the second thing is that there are several uh, organic compounds in those in the, in that organic material that gets that goes under undergoes the colification process in that the uh, compounds having the oh group they decompose and that also leads to the loss of moisture other than the hydroxyl group we have the uh, carboxylic group cooh och3 c ketonic group they these groups they split to increase the carbon content they split to increase in the carbon content so the oh group it decomposes decomposes to decrease the moisture while the other uh, uh, carbox uh, uh, other organic functional groups they split or they decompose to increase the carbon content so as you uh, go from the lignite to the bituminous stage the last remnants of uh, lignin and cellulose they are transformed into the humic material so as the rank of the coal increases we as previously discussed the amount of humic material becomes higher which is derived from the lignin and the cellulose of the plants the volatile matter it shows relatively little change during the brown coal stage and the volatile reaction products they consist predominantly of carbon dioxide and water along with some ch4 so in the brown coal stage the uh, volatile matter content is still higher it doesn't change much and uh, whatever changes take place they uh, that volatile matter content is lost in the form of carbon dioxide and water and sometimes methane gas these are all the uh, products of the change in volatile matter under the impact of uh, temperature okay now once we discuss the uh, petrographic changes taking place in the coal so when i say petrographic changes it is slightly different than the rocks so here we talk about the uh, the bands of the coal which are dull or bright and uh, uh, the changes taking place the petrographic changes they occur at the boundary of the dull bright brown coal that is sub bituminous stage and they are caused by the jellification of the humic substances so the geochemical jellification of the humic substances it leads to the uh, changes in the petrographic component that is the brown uh, sorry the uh, dull and the bright bands in the sub bituminous coal as more jellification occurs the coal becomes black and lustrous means shiny shiny black as the jellification goes on the coal become black and lustrous 
Now on the basis of the volatile matter content, the bituminous coals, they are classified normally as the uh, high volatile matter bearing coals and low volatile coal. So the high volatile coals are those which have more than 30% volatile matter while the ones having less than 30% volatile matter, they are low volatile coals. During qualification, in the high volatile coals, there is a decline in the moisture content while rise in the calorific value. The, vo uh, the uh, low volatile coals, they see a rapid decline in the volatile matter during qualification because the volatile matter in these coals, it consists of non-aromatic fractions of coal predominantly. So, the uh, high volatile coals, they have the, the higher volatile content is mostly because of the higher moisture content. So, these high volatile coals, apart from the uh, organic uh, compounds which act as the volatiles, they consist of higher moisture content. So, as the qualification process goes on, the uh, high volatile coals see a rapid decline in the moisture content, while the low volatile coals, which are less than 30 percent, they mostly have the non-aromatic fractions of coal. So, non-aromatic fractions of coal means that they have uh, these organic compounds which are uh, non-aromatic. They don't have any non. Uh, they don't have any aromatic functional groups, and they uh, can consist of lesser moisture. So they see the loss of uh, the volatile matter content rather than the moisture content. In contrast to the volatile matter content, once we talk about the uh, rank indicator, means what is the rank of coal carbon? Yes, depending on the carbon content, the uh, rank of coal is decided. But uh, in case of uh, uh, low volatile bituminous coal, carbon percentage may not be uh, a good indicator of the rank because as we go to a, a go uh, uh, towards the higher depth, the, towards the increasing depth, the volatile matter content decreases, but the changes in the carbon is very, very slight, very, very less. So, it is not a perceivable change. So, volatile matter content is the best way to uh, describe the rank of the coal in the uh, low volatile bituminous stages. Anthracite stage, as we all know, this is the highest stage of the highest rank of the coal. It is characterized by rapid fall of hydrogen content and of atomic H by C ratio and by a strong increase of, re of reflectivity and optical anisotropy. So, if you, if you see this diagram again here, as there is a fall in the Hydrogen to carbon ratio means uh, the carbon content is increasing to a much, much higher value and we are going towards the anthracite stage. Alright, so having said all these, the natural constants of coal uh, can be divided into two groups, the organic fractions. It is these organic fractions which when studied under the microscope, they can be called as the macerals. And uh, the inorganic fraction which is normally the ash subsequent to the combustion. So, as I have been telling you from the beginning of this uh, fuel geology paper that the ash content is nothing but the inorganic sedimentary material or inorganic mineral matter which gets incorporated with the coal. So, once this starts to burn at the end, the residue that is left, left behind is the coal and that is a product of the amount of uh, inorganic constituents in the coal. The organic constituents are those which are formed, which are derived from the vegetal material and they normally make up the macerals. So, once we talk about the rank of the coal, that is thermal maturity. So, this time and again I have been telling that with the... Uh, uh, with the increase in temperature, that is thermal maturity, the rank of ch coal changes, and it is also it is a function of the 
the burial depth that is the pressure and temperature so the rank of the organic fraction of coal is, is determined by the burial depth and temperature the composition of organic fraction changes with rank as shown in this diagram with the main indicators of rank being the reflectance of the vitrinite carbon volatile matter content on a dry ash free basis so if you see this uh, diagram given over here in the high volatile vit bituminous stage the reflectance is quite low then in the bituminous stage uh, the uh, low volatile and medium volatile reflectance increases and in the semi anthracite and then anthracite the reflectance is very very high so <clears throat> with depth where the rank of the uh, coal changes from high volatile bituminous to anthracite there is a progressive increase in the uh, reflectance of the coal while if uh, if we talk it's about the uh, volatile matter content of course it is very very obvious that the volatile matter content it will uh, decrease as we go from high vo uh, volatile bituminous to the anthracite stage while the moisture content of the coal it uh, uh, it you know it decreases rapidly till the medium volatile bituminous coal is almost zero till semi anthracite while at the end it increases extremely slightly very very uh, you know it uh, it increases very very slightly the calorific value of the coal it is dependent on the or it is inversely proportional to the moisture content as well as the rank of the coal so the uh, high volatile bituminous coals they are they show lesser calorific values the highest calorific values are shown by the uh, low volatile bituminous coals and followed by semi anthracite and then anthracite so the calorific value that is in kilocalorie per kg it is shown highest by the uh, low volatile bituminous coals the percentage of carbon there it shows a progressive increase and <clears throat> Uh, the highest percentage of carbon above 90 percent is exhibited by the uh, anthracite coals the amount of hydrogen keeps on reducing so from the high volatile bituminous stage to the anthracite there is a continuous drop in the uh, hydrogen uh, percentage and therefore the h by c h by c ratio it decreases as shown in the previous diagram now we come to the causes of qualification the qualification process is governed by the rises in temperature and the time the duration is very very important so how long a certain uh, material the the peat or uh, is subjected to the temperature will decide what shall be the rank of the coal now this temperature change can be achieved in two ways so first one is very common or is similar to the contact metamorphism so uh, if there is an igneous material uh, and the uh, coal comes in direct contact with the igneous material then the temperature of that igneous body it alters the uh, coal so if the coal comes in the contact with that igneous material they exhibit loss of volatiles oxygen methane and water interesting thing over here is that under the impact of that uh, igneous body the sediments associated with the coal may also get met uh, metamorphosed their type of contact metamorphism so here uh, the best examples may be found in the gondwana coals of india south africa then coals of indonesia sumatra they exhibit such type of changes in the coal due to the uh, coal coming in the contact with the uh, igneous intrusives or uh, minor intrusions or deep seated major intrusions second one is rise in the temperature associated with the depth of burial this is the most common way how the temperature might change so with increasing depth due to the overburden load the uh, the increasing depth the overburden load the temperature rises so the increasing depth of burial 
uh, it results in decrease of the oxygen contents of the coal and the increase in the ratio of fixed carbon to volatile matter. So, as the temperature increases with depth, it splits or it uh, breaks down the volatile matter and they are lost. So, that leads to an increase in the carbon content. So, the ratio of fixed carbon to volatile matter, Fc to Vm ratio, it increases with the increasing depth. In, uh, in the 1960s or 70s, Hiltz was a scientist who studied the coal uh, with regards to its temperature and he gave a law, Hiltz law, that is, in a vertical sequence, at any one locality in a coal field, the rank of the coal seams rises with increasing depth. So, it was a very important observation that in the same coal field, in the same coal field, if you uh, extract coal from shallow depth, it will be of a lower rank than the coal uh, extracted from the deeper depth in the same location. So, as the depth of burial increases, the uh, rank of the uh, coal, it increases. So, the rate of rank increase is also known as the rank gradient and uh, the geothermal gradient and heat conductivity of rock, they play a very, very important role in deciding the uh, rank gradient. So, if the <coughs> uh, geothermal gradient is higher, then the, you know, higher grades of coal may be attained at shallower depth, at shallower depth. And if the uh, gradient is, uh, the, the geothermal gradient is lower, then <coughs> for the same rank to be achieved, the uh, depth may be, the depth may uh, be much, much deeper for the same rank. So, uh, where the geothermal gradient is high, around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius per kilometer, bituminous rank can be attained at depths of 1500 meters. Whereas, in the same area, the same rank is reached at depth of 2600 meters when the uh, geothermal gradient is lower. That is, you know, 40 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So, okay, so depending on the uh, geothermal gradient as well as how the rocks they conduct the heat, the rate of the uh, rank increase that is the rate, rate uh, rank gradient of the coal shall be decided. Time, time is as I told a very very important factor. So, uh, several studies have been conducted with experiments on the qualification temperature and it has been found out that in the lab, <coughs> the uh, temperatures which have been inferred or interpreted to be the qualification temperatures, they have been inferred as much higher temperatures than the actual qualification temperature. So, For bituminous coals to form, the temperatures between 100 to 150 degrees Celsius are sufficient. Now, to attain the higher rank, the higher temperatures are required with more rapid rates of heating. That is, of course, the contact metamorphism rather than the temperatures obtained due to subsidence and depth of burial. So, remember this, that the temperature, op, uh, the temperature changes obtained once the coal comes in contact with an igneous body is uh, is faster, is rapid rate of heating and the rate of heating obtained by subsidence and then burial, uh, depth, burial depth that uh, heating is slower because it requires a lot of time over there. So, it is apparent that the degree of qualification is less where sediments have subsided rapidly in cooking time or short and time on only has real effect. So, one has to understand this that uh, uh, if the sediments 
they subside very very fast and the time for the thermal maturation is less then the degree of qualification will be lesser while if the subs the, the subsidence of the sediments is you know normal or relatively slower then the gradual rise in temperature it will allow large amount of time for the thermal maturation of the coal and there the degree of qualification shall be higher so and the other uh, point here is that when where very low temperatures occur over a very long period little qualification takes place so here first point was that if the burial is very fast means it the, the sediments they attain the temperature uh, very quickly they will not get sufficient time for thermal maturation at the same time if very low temperature it remains maintained for a long period of time then again the qualification will be less the it will not be proper because there of course the time was there but the temperature for thermal maturity was not there so both the things have to be take uh, kept in mind that temperature should be optimum and the duration under which the sediment is stays in that temperature range should also be proper that is important so the influence of time is all the greater the higher the temperature so the there should be a very good balance between the temperature and the duration and uh, for which the particular coliferous sediments they uh, get cooked or they get thermally matured is also very important the pressure is also one of the factors that causes qualification and uh, uh, its influence is greatest during the compaction compaction so from the peat to sub bituminous coal stages uh, where there is a decrease in the porosity and reduction in the moisture content pressure plays an important role pressure promotes the physical structural qualification while temperature accelerates the chemical qualification due to pressure there is a change in the uh, porosity there is an increase in the optical and isotropy parallel to the bedding planes while the temperature it causes the breakdown of the uh, several long chain organic compounds present in the coal and that is why it promotes the chemical qualification now uh, as the coal starts subsiding there is subsidence of the coal the <clears throat> pressure as well as the temperature impacts they go on simultaneously but normally the uh, chemical qualification the chemical breakdown is after the physical structural qualification after the physical structural qualification so chemical qualification it will be faster when extra heat gets supplied so it's for example the subsidence of coal is happening and it comes in contact with an igneous body which gives its extra heat then the chemical qualification or the breakdown of those uh, functional groups will increase it uh, will also cause a breakdown of uh, oh group for the loss of water and breakdown of the other uh, carbon bearing functional groups to increase the content of the carbon so uh, these are the important uh, factors that cause the uh, qualification so this is all about the uh, geological basis of coal generation so all these uh, uh, five lectures which i have uh, taken which include right from the origin of the peat to the processes of qualification it will decide what type of coals one shall get in the depositional setting area in the uh, next class we shall discuss with the uh, classification of the coal and then the quality of the coal where we shall be studying the approximate analysis of the 